Hi, here are some thoughts on number 21 from 7.1. So here's some things we can identify. Um, we know because J, so we know that angle E is 70 degrees. Let's just mark that down. So that's 70, okay, 70 degrees. And we know JH and FH bisect the exterior angles of triangle JEF. So this here is an exterior angle and it's being bisected. So we can say that this and this are congruent, okay? And we can also say that this and this are congruent because they've been bisected, that exterior angle has been bisected by JF. Okay, at this point, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start identifying some things in terms of variables. So I'm going to call I'm going to call this here A, and this will be B. I'm sorry. Let me back up. That's not going to be B because it's the same dang thing. What am I saying? So I'm going to start over again. I'm going to call that A. And I'm going to call this, no, I'll use a different color for B. I'll use blue. So this will be B. And this will be B. Okay. And what that means is this overall thing, I've got this overall exterior angle here, which is an exterior angle that adds up to uh, this angle and this angle. We're going to call that 2B is going to be the measure there. And this other one is, of course, going to be this overall angle here is going to be 2A. Okay, so there's some things we, we can also mark up. We can mark up that H, angle H, is going to be 180 degrees minus A plus B, and that'll come in useful later. I'm just going to make note of that. So A plus B, whatever A and B are, um, H is 180 degrees minus that sum. Okay, now it's time to extend some lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this line here like that. And I'm going to extend this line like that. And now I've got some angles I can also label. This is B because it's an all, it's a, um, so this is going to be a vertical angle uh, to this B. And this over here will be, you guessed it, A. I'm going to use a different color for that. That's going to be A as well. So this is A because it's a vertical angle to that. Now we've got more stuff we can work with. So we've, we can actually, because this is, I'm not sure that's going to be necessary, but it might be. Um, because this right here plus this plus 70 is going to equal 180. However, this right here plus A plus A is also going to be 180. So we could call this right here. I'll use, I'll use orange for that. That right there, I'll write it up here because it's going to be more room. 180. Okay, minus 2A is right there. Okay, and this one is 180 minus 2B right here. Okay, let's think about what 2B equals. Now, 2B is an exterior angle of this triangle JEF, right? Which means that it's going to equal 70 plus 180 plus minus 2A. So let's write that out. So we're going to say, we can say that 2B is going to equal 70 plus 180 minus 2a. And I don't need parentheses because 
I'm not going to end up changing any signs. Okay. And then 70 plus 180 is going to be 250. And then I can rearrange that equation to be 2A plus 2B. And I got all this by just playing with this. So that's going to equal 250, which means A plus B is going to be equal 125. So A plus B will be 125. Well, it's very convenient that I've got an expression for A plus B now, isn't it? Because H I've expressed in terms of 180 minus A plus B. So H is going to be 180 minus 125, which means H is 55 degrees. Okay, now the second question asks for us to find an formula for H in terms of the measure of E. So for the next part, for part B, it's going to be useful to focus in on, I'm going to erase some stuff so I have some space, to focus in on our expression for the measure of angle H that we already have. And that one is saying that up here, 180 degrees minus A plus B is the measure of H. So <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend we don't know what how many degrees E is, and we're going to come up with an expression for E in terms of the other two angles in this triangle in JEF. So E, which is 70 right now, is also going to be the measure of angle E, okay, is also going to equal 180 degrees minus the measures of the other two angles in there. So that's going to be 180 degrees minus this expression, minus 180 minus 2A. You might already say, hey, that 180 is going to go away. And then I'm going to subtract, again, e minus 2B, which is the other angle, 180 minus 2B. So this is a big, ugly expression that's got a lot of stuff to keep track of, so it is important to take care as you go. So when I reorganize this, that becomes 180 minus 180 minus 180, which is going to be negative 180, because 180 minus 180 is zero, minus another 180 is negative 180. And then minus negative 2a, min and minus negative 2b, that should have been a 2b. Okay, important to keep track of the players. Fortunately, I remembered that. You may have noticed that a second ago, and be like, what are you doing, Mr. Ward? That was supposed to be a 2b. So when I have worked out, I've worked out the numbers, 180 minus 180, minus 180 is negative 180. Now I'll work out the variable expression. So minus negative 2a is plus 2a, minus negative 2b is plus 2b. So I've got mo plus 2a plus 2b. Okay, and all of that equals angle E. And we're trying to express angle H in terms of angle E, the measure of angle E. So the measure of angle H in terms of the measure of angle E. Now you might notice there's some similarity here. There's a little bit of similarity in this expression to 180 minus A plus B, but it's still a little bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by two. All right. This page is getting super messy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit so I have a little space. And remember that angle H, which I'll probably write it down over here. So angle H, measure of angle H, I should say, happens to be 180 minus A plus B. So 180 minus A plus B. So that's important.
I'm going to put that in parentheses. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit so I have room to work. Yeah, I think that'll work better. So now I've got all this expression. Let's see what I can do with it. So the measure of angle E has boiled down to minus 180 plus 2A plus 2B. So what I could do is I could, so I need this to be a minus. I could do is I could switch that to be uh, 2A plus 2B minus 180, right? And that's all, uh, just another way of saying this same expression. Now, if I divided everything by two, then I'm a little closer to my expression for measure of H, okay? If I divide everything by two, and everything by two, then I'm gonna end up with an A plus B here. Okay, minus 90. And then over here, I'm gonna have the measure of angle E over two, because I divided both sides, everything by two. So that's gonna be over two. Okay. Now, in order to have the expression match the expression for angle H, a couple things I'm going to need to do. One thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to reverse the subtraction. I'm going to make it 90 minus, I'm going to put this in parentheses so we know it's a thing, minus A plus B. Put that in parentheses. Now we're a little closer to our expression for the measure of angle H. Over here on the other side, if I reverse that subtraction, what I've done is I've changed the sign of everything on both sides. So now that's the measure of angle E over two, but it's negative. So the opposite of the measure A of angle E over two. Okay. All right, so I've got one more thing to do to make this the same expression as the measure of H. That's add 90 to both sides. If I add 90 here and I add 90 here, this becomes 180. So that becomes 180 minus A plus B and that happens to equal the measure of angle H. Now, if we want to know what the measure of angle H is in terms of measure of angle E, we just bring this other thing over here, which says it is 90 minus the measure of angle E halved over two. And you're done. I hope that was helpful.